What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today, subreddit is r slash I do work here lady. Alright, this story's called, Queen Karen of House Dum Dum, Long May She Reign. Some backstory. I am a banker, but due to this whole Brovid-19 situation, I work at a different location than my usual branch. I live in New York, and banking is still considered an essential service, so what my bank did was temporarily close the majority of the branches in my area and those that are remaining open in two shifts. Team A, Monday through Wednesday. Team B, my team, Thursday through Saturday. Also, we now close at 3pm instead of 5pm. And the dress code, suit and tie, is no longer enforced. Right now, I don't really do all my normal duties, so the majority of my day is just servicing clients, ordering new debit cards, help set up online banking, etc. We were also instructed to do servicing through appointment only, so people won't be sitting and waiting there. I also have to do traffic control. The teller line still gets pretty busy, and we can't have more than a couple of people inside the branch at any one time, so I ask them to wait outside in line until it's their turn. Towards the end of the day, around 2.30, I step outside of the branch for a moment to take a few pools of my vape, when a middle-aged woman walks past the line and enters the branch. I respectfully come up to her and tell her, uh, ma'am, I apologize, but there's a line outside for those who are waiting to do a transaction. She looks at me and walks away from me and sits herself down in my office. By my office, I mean my workstation, since I am just at that branch temporarily, and only on Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays. But I have been working from that office for almost a month at this point, so let's just call it my office. I walk in after her and ask her what she needed help with. She just looks at me and tells me to leave. I explained that I work here and that this is my office, or at least I try to. She just gets up, comes up to the teller, and tells her that I am harassing her because I think that she skipped the line. Makes a big thing out of it. The teller had my back and did confirm that I did work there and that was my office. She was expecting to see the person who usually sits in that office, but he only works Monday through Wednesday now. I asked her again what she needed help with. Normally, I would explain the whole situation on how it's by appointment only now, but tensions were already high and we are trained to de-escalate when we can, so I thought if it was something small, I can just quickly help her and not make things any worse. What happened next, I will never forget for the rest of my life. She sat down in my office and told me that she needed a new debit card. Sounds simple enough, right? Wrong. I asked her for her ID since we cannot change, add, or order anything on behalf of the customer without verifying their identity. She said she left it at home and that I didn't need her ID since she is a regular customer. I apologized and said I can't do anything without ID. She then flipped out saying I don't know what I'm talking about, that she doesn't want to deal with me, etc. Bankers are allowed to help without ID only only if they have had a consistent relationship with the customer for over a year, which the other guy probably did, so never asked for her ID. She then went on to scream on how I did not know who I am dealing with, she has a lot of money here, and she can have me fired. She demands that I do what she tells me. I am a bit frustrated at this point, but I'm still at work, so I still acted professionally as best I could. I didn't want to get into it with her, and I just told her I am sorry, but my hands are tied. She walks out of my office, sits down on the chair outside, and starts waiting for another banker. I try to explain to her he is busy with another customer, and it's appointment only, but she won't let me get a word out. I pull that coworker out of that meeting with his client, and he reconfirms that she needs ID and couldn't wait there. She just stands up and walks out. Now, at the beginning of the story, I want to remind you that all that happened after 2.30 p.m., and we close at 3 p.m. By the time she stormed out, it was closer to 2.50 p.m. After she stormed out, my coworkers and tellers wrapped up. We spoke a bit about it, and they told me she is always like that. Before we knew it, it was 3 p.m., and we began closing the branch, including rolling down the gate. At around 3.30 p.m., PM, as the majority of my coworkers have finished their end of day procedures and have left, it was just me and a teller there finishing up. Next thing we know, Queen Karen is back, banging on the gate, 
She demands I open the gate. She got her ID and she needs a new debit card. I tell her I'm sorry, but the security system is on and I can't turn on the computers and open the gate. I tell her we are closed. She screams at me, saying, No, you idiot, you close at 5 p.m. It's only 3.30 p.m. I tell her we changed the hours of all open branches a month ago. And there is a sign on the door of the lobby and on the walls around where she is standing that show the new hours. Hours. I told her she can come in on Monday when the banker that knows her will be here and she can get done anything she needs. She then goes on to curse my life out and then picks up one of the small metallic garbage cans and starts throwing it at the gate over and over while cursing and saying she's going to kill me and burn this whole place down. Guys, never do this in a bank. The security that even the smallest banks have is no joke. Next thing you know, the repeated throwing of the garbage can at the gate triggers our alarm, which puts the bank on lockdown and calls the police. The police arrive and our security team calls to advise us on the procedure. A security rep speaks to one of the cops and says that we have footage of this woman damaging bank property, trying to break in, threatening arson, and the life of a bank employee. This woman, as mean and as crazy as she was, got arrested and, in tears, was put in the back of the police car, which I kind of felt bad about it, but there are just some things a person should know not to do. Now, this lady was definitely crazy, but this is Modelo 2020 and everyone is a little on edge. I didn't want things to escalate this much, but it was out of my hands. I have no idea what happened to her after or what she was actually charged with or whatever. Since I read that New York is dismissing certain cases as to not put people in jail to risk getting the virus, I'm not sure if it's a felony doing what she did in a bank, though which is a federally regulated institution. What I do know is that we had to remain in the branch until our bank security team arrived. I had to meet with HR over the phone and write an incident report, and it just goes on. I spent all day today with HR as well. I'm not in any trouble or anything since security footage backed up everything I said, but this lady was something else. She thought she was the queen of the world. Screw bank property and rules and even the law. She needed a new debit card and that was worth getting arrested for. And she didn't even get it. Alright, this story's called The Karen and the Boss. Okay, this one is juicy, albeit semi-long, but first a background info. I'm 55, male, autistic, Asperger's, and sufferer of Tourette's when hyper-excited or stressed out. I own a graphic design operation and have a gorgeous Downs teenager in the front of the shop, which I adore and treat like a daughter. The front of the shop is a little too tight for my power chair, which is why I always use the rear entrance. Now to the story. I showed up a little late for an interview with a prospective manager, and as I pulled into the disabled area outside the shop, a woman came up to me demanding why I was parked in the disabled bay as clearly I wasn't disabled. So I pulled out the blue badge and put it in the window and ignored her silly rant. That's fake. It's obviously fake. I'm reporting you to the police. Fine, go ahead. I'll wait here. I smiled sweetly to her. Soon enough, the police arrived and asked what the commotion was about. Karen told them I was blatantly disregarding the laws and parking in the disabled bay. I asked the nice officer if I can exit my vehicle and explain. I pressed the button on my console and the boot popped open. Then I began to drive my power chair out the back and down the ramp. Karen's jaw dropped so far, she almost had to retrieve it from the pavement. Anything else? The nice officer asked the Karen before walking away. Now, the juicy bit begins. I drive my chair around the corner and into the rear of the shop as per usual and set up ready for the interview, leaving a red-faced Karen sputtering red-faced with the officer. Soon after I settled down, I hear the shop door open and a customer arrived. I can hear Janet welcome the person with the usual greeting. Hello and welcome to shop name. Please feel free to look around and if you need anything, feel free to ask and I will endeavor to be of service. Not another freaking one, was screeched. You should all be a uh, get out, get out a baby cotted and less of a burden on the country. Obviously, Janet was taken aback and sputtered out and excuse me, you are all the freaking same. No brain and all drain. 
I'm here for the interview, and the first thing I'm going to do is fire your useless ass and get someone competent in instead. Now go get your boss, as some, uh, cooter muffin caused me to be late. By then, I had heard enough and called out to Janet to show the person through. I could hear her barge past her and arrived at my office. The look on her face when the cooter muffin, as she so eloquently spoke of, was the interviewer, smiling sweetly enough to give her a cavity. I waited until the color finished draining out of her before letting her know how I felt about her. Hello, miss or missus, please take a seat. I hear you have a great resume and are exceptional at managing a business and customer service. Now, please tell me, who the hell do you think you are? Coming over all high and mighty. Yes, I did hear you berating Janet and telling her she was going to be replaced as soon as you get hired. Well done, genius. You can get the first prize, which is absolutely freaking nothing. Now get out. And if I see you in here, then I will not be able to restrain myself. But, 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 but. No freaking buts. Get out or you will be arrested for trespassing. I think she broke the land speed record exiting my establishment. Ah, well, maybe the next applicant would suit. Edit! it! You are not gonna believe this, but have it or not, there is more to come. Just got back to my establishment from our local supermarket, and I'm still crying with fury and laughter at what just happened. I took Janet to get her food with mine, so I closed up the shop and we went to get foodies for us. Uh. And who do you think we see at the store? You guessed it, it was Karen. Now, I'm not someone who is known to hold a grudge for long. I smiled sweetly at her direction and waved. She went paler than my sheets and hurried off. Well, it was her loss at the end of the day. A few minutes later, whilst we were at the deli counter looking, and behold, security arrived with Karen in tow. There they are! Pointing to us. They're the ones who verbally assaulted me, and I demand that they are escorted out and banished from here. Now, the security guard looks at me and Janet in bewilderment and asks what happened. Before I can explain, Karen butts in with the old I already told you routine. Get the manager here now, and I demand you give me a huge discount for the stress you and these people are doing to me. Well, I nodded slightly to him and said, please do. After about eight or so minutes, the manager arrived and looked at me and Janet. Before he could say anything, I said that this lady had a complaint regarding us and your retail outlet. Well, <laughs> Hugh Karen's dirge and oh woe is me lecture about how mine and Janet's disgraceful behavior towards her was so upsetting that she had to go get security in to escort us from the premises. The manager looked at her with the look of, what are you smoking? Shall we take a look at the CCTV footage and take it from there? Janet couldn't help herself anymore and says, hi daddy. The second time this week, Karen needs to retrieve her chin from off the floor, sputter something almost intelligible and storms off. Don't come back now, you hear? Manager calls after her. I can't wait for an episode three if there is one. Okay, first off, holy cow. That is an amazing story. Also makes me super, super happy to see people with disabilities being that independent. I'm aware that it's a lot harder for some than others, but it's still cool to see nonetheless. I really hope I'm not coming off as condescending or something, but um, I'm just happy. Oh, also, uh, Karen. Ew. It's genuinely disgusting how many people actually believe what Karen was saying about the whole all br no brain, no all drain or whatever the hell she said. No brain, all drain. And it's amazing how they proved her wrong without even being petty. Here are two disabled individuals who are also very productive members of society. And Miss Karen, who's job hunting, isn't. Would you look at that irony? All right, this story's called, Salesperson Calls My Business Line, then tries to mansplain that he does not work for the company where I work. This happened no more than two minutes ago. I work for an insurance company. I got a phone call today and answered it like I usually do. Hello, business name, this is Coconut. I couldn't hear the person on the other end very well and had to say, hello? I don't think he was expecting me to answer. 
from making sales calls myself, I know that sometimes you get lost in the sound of the phone ringing over and over and don't realize right away that you've got a live one. He said he was calling from other business name and said he was calling about a refund I owed on my gas bill. I asked if he realized he was calling an insurance agency. He said, no ma'am, I'm calling from repeats other business name about your gas line. I said I do not have a gas line because I am an insurance agency. I emphasized that he had called an insurance agency. He repeats even slower. No, ma'am, I am calling about your gas line. I cut him off and asked equally slowly. So are you calling about the gas line that we do not have at the insurance agency that you called where I am working right now? He was silent a moment before saying, no. I put on my angry customer service voice and said, I need to get back to work now because I am on my work line, but thank you very much for calling and have a nice day. And I hung up. I get at least one or two calls every month from salespeople who refuse to hear me when I repeatedly tell them that they have called a business. They insist that they didn't and that they're calling about a utility bill, an extended warranty on my car, or my personal favorite, life insurance. I sell life insurance. I have life insurance through my work which is where you just called. I am not interested in talking to you about a life insurance policy when I myself sell life insurance using the phone number you just called. So before I could even drive, I was getting calls about my auto insurance policy and stuff, and I always thought it was funny. I was like, bro, I don't even drive. And they're just like, oh, we'll remove you from our call list. And then three days later, also, who keeps getting calls about their social security number or something? Like, either you did something bad involving it or someone stole it or something, and then you answer it and it's just a bunch of background noise and an Indian person talking to you. And I play along and I, I act scared and I play along as long as they will. And usually they hang up because I, I say some stupid stuff. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.